Finally, let's talk about strategies to solve, quote unquote, the many body problem. So we've talked about the many body problem, the difficulties in solving it. So how in practice do we go forward uh, for solutions to the many body problem, both in physical systems and in devices such as quantum computers? Well, before I talk about numerical techniques, techniques like the uh, extensions of diagonalization and so on, I just want to mention that uh, there's a rich history of analytical techniques uh, that have been used for decades to solve many body problems in quantum mechanics. Um, and those include things like perturbation theory, uh, where you treat the electron-electron interaction uh, as weak, um, variational principles like I talked about in helium, uh, and other methods that uh, maybe altogether neglect interactions or treat them very perturbatively in the, in the regime uh, where they are weak. And this has been very successful in semiconductor physics, solid state physics, and theory of metals, and so on. This is very important because we have to remember that our current you know, silicon-based uh, classical computing technology is in fact a quantum many-body problem. It's just one where you can neglect many of the electron-electron or spin-spin interactions uh, that I talked about previously. So now as we move forward into uh, 21st century quantum problems where the electron-electron or the quantum interactions are important, uh, these analytical approaches based on the ne neglecting those interactions uh, tend to break down. So in the strongly correlated regime, uh, of materials, quantum chemistry, and devices, we're much more reliant on numerical methods. So I mentioned exact diagonalization, uh, which uh, has an exponential scaling problem. In many cases, that is still your best technology, if you will, for solving the many-body problem. Various numerical uh, sort of approximations can be made, even in the regime uh, of diagonalization, such as taking a Hilbert space, or a spectra, an energy spectra, that's exponential in size, and finding a way to truncate that down to something perhaps that's polynomial in the number of qubits. These types of truncation, uh, compression uh, techniques where you modify the Hilbert space can have varying uh, degrees of success. Uh, based on whether or not sort of the problem is amenable to this type of truncation. Um, if you're interested only in low-lying states, diagonalization routines such as Lanchos iterative solvers will give you better scaling uh, than the brute force uh, O to the M cubed that I talked about previously. Uh, advanced methods such as the density matrix renormalization group uh, involve sophisticated uh, decimation schemes based on the entanglement structure of your wave function and uh, basically are known to work very well, for example, in one dimension. Another main sort of strategy for solving many-body interacting systems is stochastic approaches uh, based on Markov chain Monte Carlo. So these require a statistical sampling uh, of the configurations that make up the wave function, which I talked about previously. So in these methods, you imagine that some probabilistic technique uh, samples uh, configurations according to a Markov process, I plus 2. The problem with uh, these stochastic methods is that the coefficient of the wave function for each one of these configurations has to be interpreted as a probability distribution. Only then can you uh, update configurations stochastically, uh, giving yourself access to estimators for quantum objects, uh, which are basically just made up uh, of, say, for example, the magnetization along that Markov chain. And as you know, the coefficient of the wave function in that linear uh, superposition or that, um, uh, can be complex by nature. So there's many cases where stochastic approaches uh, don't work uh, in many body problems. Where these methods do work, you can get n's in the thousands, say for DMRG. And for stochastic quantum Monte Carlo methods, you can get n's in the millions or more. So when these methods work, we should definitely use them. 
There's many cases where we know they don't work. And what we're doing now in physics, uh, in computer science, uh, in, in quantum chemistry, in academia and industry around the world, is turning to new approaches based on machine learning. The motivation behind using machine learning uh, is essentially because if we take the spin configurations that I talked about in terms of either the Ising model or the transverse field Ising model, and we map these to either binary uh, numbers or say black and white pixels, we immediately see that this turns into uh, sort of uh, an image problem in the sense that we can have a large number of images made up of these pixels that we're interested in processing in some way. So a big data pr uh, problem uh, from quantum mechanics can turn into a machine learning problem. There's various different strategies that we're used to employing in machine learning that we can turn to the quantum antibody problem. Supervised learning is when we have data with labels. So if we can take configurations and label them, say ferromagnetic, paramagnetic, quantum error correcting, or whatever, then we can essentially do many tasks in classification. Classification, et cetera, with supervised learning techniques. This, of course, requires labels, a priori labels. In many cases in the quantum many body problem where we don't have labels, we would turn to unsupervised learning. Unsupervised learning might be looking at a quantum wave function and trying to find clustering or associative, uh, associative rules that govern the behavior. Unsupervised learning can also be taking measurement data, which is a measurement performed on the wave function, say a projective measurement collapses the wave function, and uh, essentially reconstructing that wave function from individual images or snapshots. That's like a reconstruction of, say, a probability distribution in the classical case or the full wave function in the quantum case. These reconstruction techniques based on machine learning uh, are, are now being studied uh, and compared to traditional techniques based on quantum state and quantum process tomography. Finally, reinforcement learning, which is known to be very powerful machine learning technique, which doesn't explicitly require data sets, either labeled or unlabeled, is also finding its place in the quantum anybody problem, especially as applied to quantum computing and in particular for quantum error correction. So in quantum error correction, uh, we, we try to find errors uh, in the quantum device and correct them before uh, logical qubits are corrupted. And there's many reinforcement learning techniques that are coming out uh, that will be able to do this sort of quantum error correction in very uh, fast time on classical processors. So as we go into the future, we have a toolbox made up of traditional numerical approaches which have been developed for decades, but we also have a new toolbox based on machine learning that will be crucial in the characterization, preparation, uh, and design of future quantum devices.